Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hector Manuel Perez. I'm an associate professor at Woodbury School of Architecture. Um, uh, this is work that has been going on, but it was very much uh, amplified by the, my sabbatical in the fall of 2019. Um, the title is Strategies to Design, Develop, and Build Infill Housing, Imaginative, Purposeful, and Engaging. This project is illustrated with four um, with four projects. Uh, starts with this quote, in our cities, space is both a resource and a commodity. And as architects, we must learn to properly maximize its potential. The four projects is uh, National City, uh, Skinny Lots, uh, Los Balcones, uh, Los Patios, and La Esquina. Um, over the last 28 years in San Diego, I've had a non-traditional practice that fluctuates between academia, art, artifacts, and architecture. And most recently, in 2012, I became a real estate developer. Uh, my sabbatical coincided with this work for National City, where we were asked to identify and design opportunistic infield design strategies as part of a transit-oriented development overlay, a total plan. This is work that I did in collaboration with city thinkers, urban planners, uh, and design firm, and Chen Ryan Mobility. Uh, we basically are taking a portion of the city that is adjacent to the trolley station and uh, uh, doing a plan update. Uh, the plan update uh, attempts to identify uh, sites with potential for development. Um, as part of this project, which is currently in the schematic design, uh, I've developed um, six housing prototypes, and these are the first uh, uh, section of them. Uh, project prototype that I entitle skinny sites. Um, skinny sites are, are defined by this little landscapes uh, that you see flanking uh, many um, parking lots in the city of National City. They're anywhere between 10 and 13 uh, feet wide. Uh, they're between the walk, uh, the, the, the sidewalk and the parking lots. Uh, this city is, is, is the, the car, um, um, I guess the, the place where San Diegans buy their, their vehicles. So there is a very popular street uh, in National City that's called the Mile of Cars. All these properties that we identified that have this condition of the strip of landscape that is often just a, 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 a nuisance rather than, than a decoration or an urban um, amenity. Um, we identified all this uh, green dotted areas that flank um, these properties as potential sites for intervention. Um, this first pro project prototype, the skinny lot, this starts with the split level units um, and where we're, we're quantifying how do we occupy the ground floor and not two or three more stories of housing above it. Uh, the zoning will be changed to accommodate the encroachment and each of the properties, uh, the adjacent, the property owners will be partnering or developing the sites themselves, depending on, on their experience or, or willingness to, uh, to develop. Um, this prototype 1A is the split level units. Um, so the way we illustrate it in this plan update is a simple diagram of the floor plan and uh, section and elevation of what the building would look like. Uh, the skinny site prototype uh, scheme C is this yin yang units um, that are basically uh, small studios, 180 to 250 square feet. Uh, and then the most porous one is the skinny shot, um, shotgun double lofts, which are uh, this uh, long, long, um, 30 feet wide and, uh, and 12, feet, 12 feet wide and 30 feet deep double loft units that have a lot more porosity. Um, in the next project uh, as part of the sequence is uh, Los Balcones project. This project is currently in design development phase. Uh, it is in the North Park neighborhood of San Diego. And it is a sensible case study that will demonstrate how to densify it in an upzone property while preserving a 1927 house on a 7,000 square foot lot. This project it's, it illustrates a, a condition that happens a lot in, in, in neighborhoods that have been up zoned to afford uh, 
uh, multi-residential projects. Uh, in the case of what we're trying to do here is we're trying to preserve the scale and the character of the, of the neighborhood by preserving the house in the front while densifying the potential of, uh, of, of the lot and adding uh, uh, the, the, um, the house and units in the back uh, portion of the lot uh, near and access through the alley. Uh, so Los Balcones is, uh, is one project with three structures, two three-story buildings are added that will have a total of 10 lofts with build, big balconies. Uh, the total project square footage will be just below 5,000 square feet. So you, you, know, you begin to see that the scale of the units uh, and, 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 and the, the tightness of it affords really the density that, uh, that one would maximize, uh, would desire in, in, in this, this kind of neighborhood. So Los Barcones fits already very neatly within the single and multi-residential uh, neighborhood uh, of North Park. Simple floor plans on the ground floor, you have a single unit and a two bedroom unit. This is of course behind the 1927 house. On the second floor, you have two yin yang units. Um, the balconies are alternating sides so that there's never um, a direct view into uh, from one, one unit into the next for maximizing privacy. Uh, and the next floor, it just flips and um, a single stair that leads to uh, the three floors with a roof garden. And uh, this is sort of a, a, a current uh, it, uh, iteration of what the project is looking at like. Um, where the project is, uh, we're in the process of getting permits and we hope to get financing and break ground in January and complete it by the end of 2020, December, 2022. Um, the next projects are a few blocks from our San Diego campus in Barrio Low. Barrio Low is what I consider to be the most unique urban laboratory in San Diego. It has an incredible mix of industrial, commercial and residential uses that make it an ideal uh, place for intervention. Uh, Barrio Logan, for those of you that don't know, is 20 minutes away from the San Diego-Tijuana border. It's the most crossed border in the world. Barrio Logan is also a very culturally loaded neighborhood and home to Chicano Park, the largest collection of outdoor murals in the United States. And it was named a National Historic Landmark in 2015. And Jake Katanach, a very young uh, alumni from the uh, 2017 the BRC uh, program. Um, they are my partners and together with a landowner uh, we formed the partnership that is building this uh, 40 unit. Um, Los Patios is a case study on cleaning, building and activated an urban void. Um, the pre-existing condition of the site uh, was an empty parking lot with an industrial building. Um, and that was the case from 1947 till 2020, uh, December, when we broke ground. Uh, Los Patios, of course, is a design, develop, and build project. The pre existing site condition is a 13,991 square foot surface lot that was uh, uh, the home of a former industrial factory, uh, ice cream factory. Um, it had some um, toxic. Uh, um, uh, toxicity that needed to be cleaned up. So um, Los Patos actually found, uh, follows this community mandate to clean up and, 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 and activate. Um, Barrio C. Yonkes known as this mural under the Chicano uh, uh, Park, um, under the Coronado Bridge in Chicano Park states. It basically says that uh, neighborhood yes and junkyards no. Uh, the unique mix of, uh, of, of Los Patios uh, has two commercial units in the front and 40 loft suites uh, on four stories. It is accommodated around a uh, uh, central courtyard. Um, the two small commercial units um, will feature uh, this frutas, it's a uh, tortas and jugos. Uh, a restaurant. Uh, it will be the second one by this uh, this entrepreneur Patricia Garcia, who has two of these in National City, and also on the other side will be Nativo, which is a coffee house from Tijuana. The uh, Miguel Marshall is the owner, and he's this will be his first venue in uh, San Diego. Los Patios uh, uh, has a, a landscape and dash parking that is 
uh, intended to be an environmental sensitive design strategy with the material treatment of pervious pavers and trees, um, gravel and street uh, steel planters and walkways with soft edges of native grasses and flowering trees. Uh, the central common area, it's almost 2,000 square feet, uh, it will be for, fa for family and individual social events. The common area required by the project zoning uh, was 10%. Uh, we proposed 14%, uh, so we exceeded. Uh, the lot coverage, which is how much building you could put on the ground floor, uh, the, the zoning allowed us 65%, and we proposed a much lighter footprint on the ground, uh, 24%. Uh, the most unique component of this project is that the, the small units, each of them, every single one of them, uh, will have its own private patio and deck, something that, especially during COVID, we have found to be a, an incredibly important aspect of, of, of urban and dense housing. Um, and the strategy that we have for Los Patios amplifies and, and taps onto that potential. So the private area that was required by zoning was 60% of the units were required to have a, a little patio or balcony. In our projects, 100% of the units will have this. Uh, you notice that the project being uh, um, organized around the central open courtyard also has the, all, the, all the units access to that courtyard and the perimeter is basically patios that allow the units to have cross ventilation and natural light on both sides. Um, so the public benefits and additional contributions of, of Los Patios see that it cleans up a brownfield site and removes urban blight. It activates a long vacant lot. Uh, it activates a street front from, um, with the small commercial uses across from already a large brewery that has a, a tasting room, uh, Thorn Street Brewery. Uh, across the street. Um, there's absolutely no displacement of, of residents. This is a strategy that we always try to adopt in every project that we tackle. But there's, there, in order for a project not to, not to be uh, considered gentrifying, in my perspective, is that it shouldn't be displacing any current residents for it. It respects the neighborhood character in scale and character. It adds to the, uh, to the variety of market rate affordable housing. All our housing units, there's two very affordable units that are part of the, uh, um, the, bon um, the uh, zoning um, requirement based on, on the bonuses that we applied for. But the housing, every single unit is calculated to be 80% of the, uh, the, the average um, um, income of the area. So they're very affordable in, in that regard. And it also contributes to the artistic vibrancy of the neighborhood through design and art programs that will be, we're currently working on the next door neighbor that has a 25 by 140 lot in the community garden with two students from Woodbury and myself. Um, the passive environmental design, the strategy of natural light, natural ventilation throughout the project, the pervious groundscape to minimize heat gain and radiation uh, versus a, a traditional asphalt surfaces and the drought tolerant landscape with native uh, plant palette. Um, but in going back to the first in, in, in my first project, my leap of faith into real estate development came in 2009 at the bottom of the recession when I bought a 3,900 square foot lot in Barrio Logan that had been vacant since 1964. Um, this neighborhood, of course, Barrio Logan, uh, with its contested and regenerative dynamic made it both attractive and, and affordable. Um, the first step that I took and I always tell my students uh, to make sure that they do this whenever they, uh, they, they, they buy a, a piece of property to develop, is in order to show respect to the community, in my case, Barrio Logan, you take ownership of the lot by, by cleaning it and adding uh, a feature. Uh, if you're gonna demarcate this, this, this perimeter, do it in a way that is respectful and beautiful, at least try to. In my case, I was fortunate enough that a decommissioned project that I had done for the San Diego Museum of Art uh, was gifted and I uh, was able to use it as a uh, it's called, uh, frameworks. And uh, I was able to use it as my first construction fence. So after designing, running performance, processing permits and negotiating a construction loan, remember 2010, we still recovering from, from, uh, from the recession and more than 10 banks rejected my request for a loan. I built this uh, nine, uh, eight unit, 3,900 square foot lot, uh, project. 
Um, it is located in 2222 Logan Avenue, 1.5 miles from the Central Library, 1.7 miles from the Padres Stadium, 1.5 miles from the Convention Center, three miles from Balboa Park, four, mar four, mile four blocks from the Working Bay, and two blocks from Chicano Park, and three blocks from Woodbury School of Architecture. Uh, in an attempt to pay homage to Chicano Park murals, as Cesar Chavez's 3D mural was painted on the north facade, and also the vibrant uh, use of colors uh, connected to the vibrancy of the community. So beyond the, uh, the material and architectural merits of the project, uh, the most relevant um, aspect of the schema is that it has become a community and creative incubator. Uh, it participates in the monthly Barrio Art Club and is the backdrop for the bi-weekly La Vuelta Lowrider Summer Festival. And, uh, and I, I thank you for for uh, allowing me to share this work with you. This is a context of uh, work that has been developed by uh, Woodbury alumni and faculty.